Hey everyone, welcome back to Black Z Garage. What we're going to be doing this weekend is we are going to put a new rear end in uh, Project Camaro. It has the original 10 bolt in it, which I damaged late last year at a Wednesday night test and tune. So uh, I really had no choice but to upgrade. So what I did is I got a new Ford 9 inch rear end here. It is from Quick Performance. I got uh, the entire package. We're going to put it together, we'll put it in the Camaro, and we'll take it out and beat on it a little bit. So I guess first thing first, I'll get to t set the clock, set the timer so we know how long it takes us. I'll get the wheels off and uh, we'll get started. So I think I'm going to start out with a little prep work on the 9 inch here. Uh, the kit comes with two sets of bolts. The original T style bolt that the Ford had and then this one which we're going to use. Now it has a knurl on the outer edge of it and what the directions say if you put the bolt through and it doesn't want to go through do not do not do not drill out this at all. What you want to do is get on the grinder and just take a little tiny bit of this off of here. Uh, I've already done a couple I've got about four or five put in already to see how it goes uh, so I'm just going to go over to the grinder, just take a little tiny bit of this off, and then uh, pr they'll press in pretty easily. So that's what I'm going to work on next. That really should be it right there. So let's go see if it fits or not. Feels like it's probably, probably going to fit. They gave me one extra bolt, which is nice of them. I guess they understand my propensity to screw things up they're both a little bit tight i'm going to try this one uh what i use is a c-clamp and one of these i just set this over top and push it up through tightening the c-clamp just make sure it's nice and tight right here and that's all it should be to it it'll pop right in okay so right now i'm about 35 minutes into it uh, I've got all the bolts in they're tight they're all the way in so all what I want to do now is basically break clean the crap out of the inside and blow it out really good uh, they clean the outside really well before they powder coated it but there's no guarantee the insides clean so with all the extra bracing and stuff and everything that's welded in here uh, and popping these in there could easily be a little bit of debris so hose this out and blow it out really good and then i'm going to start disassembly after i do that basically i'm going to take the brake caliper off with the 3 8 socket hex head socket uh half inch socket will get the bolts out at the top 9 16 will get the bottom shock bolts and 9 16 will get the upper brackets for the sway bar so i'm going to take the brake pad, take the caliper off, get the shock off, and start getting the sway bar off next. All right, that first step only took a couple of minutes. What I'm going to do next is finish getting the sway bar out. So I'm going to uh, pull off these two nuts right here, 11 16 This bracket, a red bracket, will drop down. You can just pull out the sway bar, and it'll just pop out the other side. The other thing I want to do is get the uh, brake line off of the rear end. My original tabs were broken off, so I had a couple of worm clamps holding it on here. Took those off. You got one uh, T right here, which has like a half inch nut to take off. And then I'm gonna take off the four 7 16 drive shaft bolts. So that'll be the next thing I do. Okay, so I got the brake lines loose. I got the drive shaft off and lay them over there on the floor. The next thing I want to do is get this bracket off. This bracket is for the disc brakes. Uh, it has three bolts on it. I need to take it off and put it on the new rear end. So while the, this rear end still bolted to the spring, I'll go ahead and take these off and set them on the table. All right, so I got that last crap done. And I took a minute to suck down a quick Mexican Coke because they're the best by far. So where we're at now is uh, we're uh, like an hour and a half into this thing. Pretty much everything is off the rear end. The rear end is still bolted to the springs and the springs are still connected to the car, but everything else is off. The drive shaft is off. All the uh, brake lines are off the top. Sway bars off the bottom. 
Uh, so now it's ready for the rear end to come out. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways. Uh, if you want to do it the young hard ass way, uh, you can pull the jack out. You can uh, just unbolt these you, one U bolt on each side. And you can lay on your back and muscle this thing out of here. Uh, that is feasible because <clears throat> the nine inch going in is actually all apart, so it's a pretty light. So you'll be able to put it right in if you can get this out. Uh, but if you're intelligent, the smart way to do it would be to uh, disconnect the springs here on each side and then just let the jack down and let the slowly come down and then you can unbolt it here and drag it out the back so that's what's next however you want to do it is up to you all right rear ends out we are basically at two hours and so i'm gonna clean stuff up and then uh, we'll basically be start ready putting stuff back together all right so we got the rear end out uh sugar is my drug of choice and that mexican coke is full of sugar so i blasted that rear end out of here uh, and with the extra energy i think what i'm going to do is take a little time and clean up underneath the car uh, i hate to put that beautiful new rear end up under a car it looks like ass and i'm also going to take the uh cow tracks apart uh clean them up maybe paint them a little bit if necessary uh re seize all the uh joints and stuff and put them back together so that's what i'm gonna do next okay here's the last update for uh today it's getting pretty late i kind of got sidetracked a little bit i was cleaning underneath and decided just go ahead and clean as much as i could so i went ahead and dropped the front spring eye i'm gonna take this apart and re-lube it up before i put it back i dropped the exhaust basically i'm just gonna hose down underneath the car and then uh wash it off rinse it off and clean up as much of underneath as i can as long as i'm at it so uh that's it for today i'm gonna hose it down let the floor dry tonight and then start back tomorrow If you haven't put uh, cow tracks on a car before, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're using the stock spring, you push out the rubber bushing and they provide you a new bushing to push in. And I'm already using cow track springs, so they already have the bushing installed. So they supply the grease. Uh, first of all, they're very nice to print out color directions. Nobody ever does that. So take time to read the directions, especially since they nice enough to print them in color uh, they supply grease grease this up good what you want to do make sure this is over the spring the sticker is on the outside and this is underneath just slides in like that easy enough it's a little tight from the powder coating but slides in like that now 70 to 81 firebirds and some other cars they provide these washers uh, we do need them on my car so we put one on each side and then I took a couple minutes and repainted this so you put this over top and line up the hole you might need a little influencer or something to Okay, important tip when you're putting this in, once I get it right, always put the bolt in this way towards the middle of the car because uh, if you try and put it up in there with the washer and nut on the outside, it won't go up in. So uh, the bolt goes in this way when you get lined up.
Okay, now if you get them tightened up, you know, pretty good and snug, should still be able to move this, okay? Now also, so that's ready to push up in. Uh, I highly suggest buying new bolts and J-nuts for up there. Uh, you always want to make sure it stays solid. So I bought some new bolts and I'm just going to lift it up in there and use a 916 socket and put them in. So the front part of the cow tracks are up and in. That easy. So now that we got the rear end up and located on the leaf springs on the little dowel pins, it's on there solid. I went ahead and bolted up this side completely. Uh, there are no spring pads like there are uh, in a passenger car. This is metal to metal and metal to metal on the bottom. Uh, the hole on the bottom of the Caltrax is a little bit larger than the dowel pin. Uh, all you got to do is just kind of center it in there and then when you tighten these down just make sure they're straight make sure they're run up about even and uh, according to the directions you should always read they say between 65 and 70 foot pounds so I torqued them to 65 then I uh, went ahead and put in the sway bar on this side the only thing you have to do different uh, when you put this side in you gotta go ahead and put the sway bar bushing on the sway bar get this lined up fairly straight and then bring it up and uh, do the bolt so that's what I work on next and then I'm going to start on the center section so I think here's where I'm going to stop for the night uh, the rear housing is up and in I got it all bolted down I got the uh, sway bar back up inside so I'm, tomorrow I'm going to start I'm putting the center section in and uh, up until now, I've got seven hours and eight minutes. And that's where I'm at. So I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, it's kind of nice out, so I opened up the door. So we got some nice light in here. Uh, we're getting ready to move on to the next step. Uh, we got the rear end completely bolted down. I also took a couple of 9 16 wrenches, and I got the uh, upper sway bar mount put in. Uh, what we're going to work on next uh, is the center section. I uh, just want to say a couple things about that. Uh, the kit didn't come with washers, and I'm a fan of washers, so I did buy some three stainless steel 3 8 washers to uh, bolt in the center section. And also, I did buy a gasket. However, uh, if you read the directions like you're supposed to, uh, they recommend in using uh, RTV silicone. Uh, so as you can see, we have the center section on the jack. Uh, my friend Matt is going to run the jack up. I'm going to get under there and just steady it and then we're just going to slide it right on. So that's what we're going to do next. I think now would be a good time to take care of the vent that's on the rear end. Uh, what I did is I bought four feet of cheap 5 16 uh, hose. Cheap as you can get is fine. I did buy a little Spectre vent for the uh, top end of it. So I'll put that on. I got some uh, Dorman vacuum adapter so I could adapt the 5 16 to 3 8 end on this. Uh, I got a few zip ties and a couple of hose clamps. Uh, directions say to put a couple loops in this, so that's what I'm going to do with the zip ties and put it all together and I'll show it to you when I'm done. Boom, we're done. So here's the final shot of my vent breather tube. I uh, connected it here with a little hose clamp. 
Uh, I found a bracket that I could uh, zip tie to with a large zip tie. I got a couple wraps in it, rolls in it like they wanted. There's plenty, plenty of play, so uh, the movement of the rear end isn't going to yank it out. And I found an old bracket up over there to zip tie where the uh, filter end is. Once you've got the center section bolted in, uh, you want to keep this project rolling along. The next thing is probably going to be the drive shaft. Uh, in my case, the drive shaft is too short, but if you're switching rear ends, it's either going to end up being too short or too long. Uh, so what I decided to do is I went to Speedway Motors. I got one of their fast shafts. Uh, Speedway promises a quick turnaround and a high quality product, so I gave them a try. Um, I gotta say I'm happy with the product. It did come back quite quickly. Um, it's a very nice looking piece. It's a bigger diameter than the original. Uh, it's thicker, everything's more heavy duty. It's balanced. Uh, the welds are very professional. So I'm excited to uh, bolt this thing in and then uh, head on to the axles. So putting the axles in is very straightforward. Um, you put a very, very small amount of RTV on the, on the bearing. Just put a little bit on your finger and run it around the bearing. And that's it, a small amount. And then just carefully feed it in. Once you get to where the bearing's ready to seat in, just lightly tap it with a little influencer like this, and it is in. Just wipe off any excess RTV. Now there is also a backing plate which goes with this. I think I will wait and talk about this uh, when we do the brakes. Okay, so with the axles being in, what we're going to do now is uh, put the jack underneath the center of the rear end. We'll jack it up a little bit. We'll uh, install the shocks, and then we will put in the uh, bars for the uh, cow track unit. So putting the shocks back on is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we have the rear end jacked up. So uh, what we've got now is we've got two bolts at the top of the shock, half inch. Um, I used a ratchet and tightened those up. And then once I got that, the QA1 shocks are not gas charged. So you have to pull them down and pull them down until the bayonet comes through the hole in the cow tracks. So I already had the uh, washer and the bushing on here, push it through. I put the uh, bushing and the washer and the large nut. This has two nuts. Put the large nut on first and tighten it down until the rubber bushing diameter matches the diameter of the washer. And then you'll put the second nut on and that's a lock nut to keep the uh, first nut on. I'll call that good. One more. Okay, that's good. So now I put the jam nut on it. If it wants to go on. Okay. And I'll hold the top nut while I tighten the bottom one against it. And that should be done. Okay, shocks are on. I'll do the other side and then the shocks will be on. According to uh, these beautiful directions, finishing up the cow track should be super simple. Uh, we just have to grease up the end links and uh, put on the transfer bar. So now, when I tell you guys using a uh, black Permatex, I always tell you use as little as possible, and I really mean that. But uh, when using anti-seize, go ahead and be as liberal as you feel like. Okay, so on the front mount here, I've spun the screw, all, the set screw all the way up, and I've already put a decent amount of anti-seize on the front part. Now, on the uh, back, we'll take the piece off, we'll take the end link out. 
I'll go ahead and spin up the nut all the way. Put a deep, plenty of anti-seize, don't be shy. I'll go ahead and use a little more. Okay, so now that's ready to be put on. Okay, now the transfer link uh, has one side that has flats on it for uh, the wrenches to fit. Okay, that goes towards the front. So what we'll do is we'll just start this for uh, the front one a tiny bit. I've got it, maybe one thread maximum. Then I'll put the rear link in. and just barely get it started okay then you hold the rear link and you turn the bar and it will pull both end links in evenly and you pull it in until you can get the back bolt through I got the bolt in one washer Okay, turn it. Then I got the washer and the lock nut on the other side. Now I'll take the two big wrenches I got, an inch and a sixteenth and an inch and an eighth, and I will tighten this up. Now when you tighten this up, only take the slack out of the bolt. Don't tighten it up to where you're almost pinching the black parts together. Just take the slack out. That's it. So I'll do that real quick. And uh, Okay, just can't quite, just can't move it anymore. It's just snug, so that's it. And basically that's it. Uh, turn it down a little bit before you let the uh, car back down. But uh, that's it. So basically we've got everything done except for the brakes. And that's going to be a whole entire episode in itself. But uh, basically, start to finish nine hours and 15 minutes or so.